Hello everyone. Today is Friday, October 20th, and now that Gizmo has stabilized a little bit, I wanted to take a moment to give a more consolidated update and overview of everything that has happened, and also address a few of the frequently asked questions. So on Wednesday, October 11th, Gizmo was diagnosed with stage 4 kidney failure, uremic ulcers, and stomatitis in his mouth because of his failing kidneys. He spent Wednesday night and Thursday night in the ICU at the animal hospital where he received antibiotics for his ulcers and IV fluids to flush his kidneys. He also had an abdominal ultrasound done that revealed his kidneys and spleen were enlarged, which prompted us to do a biopsy of his spleen. As of Thursday, October 12th, the diagnosis came down to two options, lymphoma or FIP. The spleen biopsy ruled out lymphoma, so all signs then pointed to FIP, which is also called feline infectious peritonitis. Not many people have heard of FIP, but unfortunately, my family has. We lost our kitten Waffles to it in December of 2021, so not even two years ago. Uh, he was only about nine months old. For those of you who are unfamiliar with FIP, and I'm gonna to try to simplify this as best as I can. FIP is basically a fatal immune mediated disease triggered by an infection of feline coronavirus. So not the one that the humans, not, not the one the humans got. It, but basically a cat catches a cold and then the cold mutates into FIP. And there's two types of it. There's wet FIP and dry. Gizmo has dry FIP, Waffles had wet. The big difference between the two is that with wet FIP, the cat develops fluid in their abdomen, so they are visually not okay, more so than the dry FIP cats. So let's talk treatment. Up until very recently, FIP was a death sentence. When Waffles got it, the treatment was by injection only and was upwards of a little over $200 per day, I believe. And it, so it was an injection every day. Thankfully now, which it's only been a year and a half later, the treatment's available in pill form and with a much more attainable price. What is still a tricky part is that the treatment is only available from a non-official market. So your vet cannot give you the FIP medication and technically they're not even really supposed to talk about the fact that it exists. Thursday afternoon, after receiving the news about Gizmo's biopsy being normal, I made the choice to start him on the FIP medication protocol. He will have to take two of his pills every day for a minimum of 84 days. Could be longer if he relapses, we just don't know. Today is day eight, so we have 76 more to go. He's also still receiving an anti-nausea pill every day and then painkillers when necessary. He hasn't needed them in a while, so I'm very thankful for that. Then he also gets a daily application of Miritaz, which is an appetite stimulant ointment that actually goes inside his ear on his bare skin for maximum absorption. Last Friday, the 13th, lovely enough, they retested Gizmo's kidney levels and were hoping for an improvement after the antibiotics and the fluids. Unfortunately, his levels did not improve at all. They were still off the charts bad. From there, all we could do was keep him comfortable and continue the FIP protocol. In the last week, Gizmo's made some very good strides and promising improvement. He's moving around a little bit more and more interested in following me around the house, and he's less pale than he was originally. Today is Friday the 20th. Uh, I took him back to the animal hospital earlier and learned how to give him subcutaneous fluids at home, which is basically like an IV, except it goes under the skin instead of into a vein. So I will be administering that every other day until he starts drinking more on his own or until we are instructed to do otherwise. That's everything that's happened to Gizmo so far and that has just happened in general so far. So then what are the plans for moving forward? All of Gizmo's improvements have given me hope. But as his guardian, it would be irresponsible for me to not have contingency plans established. So we're charting every drink of water, every bite to eat, nap, medication, demeanor, all of it. If I see him doing anything remotely, anything, I'm tracking it. 
We track it and we use it to determine if he's having a good gizmo day, a meh momo day, or a gloomy gizmo day. And we as a family have determined at one point that ratio of good to gloomy days will change our next course of action. So far, his good days have significantly outweighed his others. The next major update will come on Wednesday or Thursday of next week, depending on when he gets his lab results back. He's got an appointment back at the animal hospital on Wednesday to recheck his kidney levels. If his levels have not improved, we will make any adjustments to his treatment plan and go from there. The hope is that he will have better levels and that will show that the FIP treatment is working. So that's a summary of what we've been doing and what we plan on doing. We still have troubles getting him to eat, but he's again, slowly improving. Some questions people have asked about FIP and about just this whole situation. What were the initial symptoms that prompted me to take him to the vet? The only symptom that I really noticed was the fact that he peed on my bathroom rug right in front of me. And I knew that that was not a normal thing. Anytime your cats change bathroom habits, it is not a normal thing and you need to take them to the vet. And I'm glad I did because lo and behold, here we are. So that was the only real, that was the only symptom that was a really red flag. The other symptoms included, he was a little more lethargic, I would say. And then he also had been losing a little weight, which he had done in the past because of allergy issues and whatnot. So those weren't the big flags. But when he actually like went to the bathroom in front of me, I said, no, we're going today. Is FIP contagious? No, it is not. There are unfortunately genetic links to whether or not a cat will develop FIP. So if one kitty in the litter has gotten it at any point in time, there is a very strong likelihood that the others could develop FIP if they were exposed to the feline coronavirus, which is a fairly common virus. Is there a way to prevent FIP? There is technically a vaccine, but it is not reliable. It only exposes the cat to the coronavirus in a more controlled environment. And the hope is that from there, they will not develop FIP if they contract it in the future. People have asked, how are the other cats handling him being sick? I don't know. Luna and Aria don't really care that I can see. Bruce is concerned. Well, one of the reasons that we got Gizmo so soon after losing Waffles is because when we lost Waffles, Bruce became extremely depressed, like not eating. All he would do is sit in that chair and sleep. So we got Gizmo and Bruce perked right back up. So Bruce is not happy that Gizmo is sick and Floki is very not happy that Gizmo is sick because Floki has a bunch of kitten energy. So he is now taking that energy out on Luna and also on Bruce. And that's another thing that's just bugging Bruce. So I try to give him a safe spot in here where he can be just chill and quiet as it is. So yeah, the GoFundMe is still, my head is in the clouds over that. It doesn't feel real about the amount of help that we've received. So thank you and you know, your continued support, everyone that has been sending pictures and their stories, they help. They give me smiles, they make me feel better. And yeah, I will just, every day is a gift with him and I will keep continuing every single cuddle session that he asks to have with me. So thank you for listening to my long update. Until we meet again.